Australia is fast becoming Asia's launch site of choice. A rocket company has teamed up with Australia with plans to launch from the Arnhem Space Centre. And joining me live now to talk about it is Equatorial Launch Australia's Chief Executive Michael Jones. Michael, welcome. So why Australia? What do we have that under other countries may not? What makes us so appealing? Yeah, good morning. There's a number of factors. Um, geographically, um, the north of the Northern Territory is probably as close as you can get to the equator um, in a first world country, which is geopolitically stable as we are in Australia. Um, we also have um, at our site, and this is a big point, all the attendant um, infrastructure and logistic support services of a port, an airport, a hospital, et cetera, um, all surrounding um, the, the town of Nullumboy on the Gove Peninsula. And so it really is sort of the perfect slot, um, location to launch into space. And one of the big advantages we have, which is unusual, is our ability to launch parallel to the equator and to do equatorial launch. And that's our big sort of key secret. So we're finding that not only Asian launch companies, but also globally, um, we're in high demand. And sort of in the very near future, we hope that we'll be booked out for the foreseeable future. And it bodes a really bright future for the Australian space industry and us. Now, tell us a little bit about this new partnership that's occurring. So the one we've just announced is with a Singaporean-based company who has a name very similar but is not actually connected to us, which is uh, Equatorial Space Services. And ASS um, have a range of small rockets that they want to launch and test from our site. Um, and that is on their pathway to developing a um, orbital rocket, which, again, their intention is to launch from our site in the future. Um, and we've been talking to them for a while now, and the unique nature of our site and the ability for them to do testing, suborbital launches, and then grow into orbital launches is the key reason that they've chosen us. And, you know, they're a bright young company. We really like dealing with them. They're very smart, um, and they've got, uh, hopefully, a, a very good future in the space industry. Now, as you mentioned, we're in a pretty good position up in the NT. Now, could this put Australia on the map as a serious contender in space travel? Sure. In 2022, we were selected by NASA to do the only commercial space launch that they've ever done from a commercial spaceport. It was also Australia's first commercial space launch. And, you know, we're hoping in the very near future to do another um, series of launches with a Korean company, InnoSpace. Um, who have already done one space launch in Brazil, but um, have chosen us for their next 12 launches. And we have another 11 companies who we have draft contracts, you know, very close to finalisation. Um, and most of the delays in those finalisations are due to um, them and the uncertainty on their schedule, not our side. So really, uh, we're expecting that ELA and the Arnhem Space Centre um, in the Northern Territory is going to become you know, a global hub for space. I mean, already when we travel internationally, we're seen as, you know, part of the furniture and, and, and part of the, the world infrastructure for space. So our reputation and our esteem globally is, is pretty good already. Yes, it's fantastic, isn't it? Now, Michael, can you tell us about some of the projects you've got in the pipelines that you just mentioned? Yes, yeah, so we are really the most advanced commercial spaceport. Um, you know, traditionally all spaceports or sport, space launching you know, locations have been owned by governments, whether they be Kennedy Space Centre at Cape Canaveral or Vandenberg Space Force Space on the west coast of the United States or Karoo in French Guiana, which is owned by the French government and um, operated by ESA, the European Space Agency. Um, so we're really the first and leading that. And what we decided to do was... Um, take all the learnings from the past 75 years of space launch and also to apply new technology. So we've done a lot of work in the design of advanced uh, launch pads, which enable the rocket to be fitted to the pad, erected and launched very quickly or in testing processes, put up, have all the systems tested in a safe environment pull the rocket down again. So an enormous amount of work has gone into that and we have a very unique design for that, which is proving to be very popular with our potential customers and is a big point of difference. In addition to that, worldwide, there's a shortage of 
payload preparation facilities, which do require sophisticated clean rooms and assembly areas. And we're building seven of them on the Arnhem Space Centre because we plan to be a, a multi-user site with many countries basically setting up their space operations there on a long-term basis. So um, we, we've been hard in development of all of that. And of course, it's also a very large scale infrastructure program where um, we have a lot of just civil engineering works and construction um, that are underway and in design at the moment. And over the next uh, sort of 18 months, that'll all come to fruition. And that is all, you know, uh, supplementing the site one that you know, the vision that you're showing at the moment um, was used for NASA and is already there and enables us to continue um, doing space testing and development activities. But the phase two um, new site development, with which we're undertaking at the moment, you know, will be completed uh, you know, by the end of this year, early next year, in readiness for a whole series of much higher um, cadence or tempo launches that we're anticipating throughout um, 2025 and 26 and beyond. What wonderful news for us here down under. Michael Jones, thank you for your time. Keep up the great work. Thanks very much. Pleasure to be there.